Hello, I'm Liam and welcome to my June allotment tour. Firstly, thank you to everyone who left a comment or liked the previous video. I really appreciate that. And if you like this video, please let me know too. It's a great sunny day today down here on the plot. Everything's growing really well. And in this video, I'll share the vegetables, fruits and flowers that are growing down here. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the usual way. And I've also got a website too, allotmentbook.co.uk. So let's get started. Highlights of the allotment tour include the blueberries coming into season, gooseberries almost ready for picking, very large tabery fruit just becoming ripe, raspberries ripening on the cane, masses of strawberries, and the first cucumbers, masses of leaves of perpetual spinach and chard ready for picking, with the plot surrounded by beautiful flowers, including these lovely poppies. Stepping through the fruit, I'm really pleased with the blueberries. Most of the fruit is still green at the moment, but hopefully in the next week or two, the fruit will swell and the harvest should last three to four weeks. At least I'm hoping so. Some of the bushes have got more fruit on than others. This bush here is particularly loaded with fruit, but the one next to it is more green. It does have more fruit on it, but nowhere near as much as the one I was just looking at. The blueberries are covered with a net and where the weather's been dry, I've been giving them a good watering once a week. The strawberries have been great this year. I've had masses of strawberries off them. Really good flavour as well. I think the warm weather recently has really helped them. The cage is really important. If I didn't have the cage, animals and maybe even humans come and help themselves. I secure the wire mesh on top with these wooden battens which are screwed down onto the wooden frame that surrounds the strawberries. That does the trick. It is a pain to have to come along with a screwdriver to lift the screws to be able to lift the cage to get to the fruit and also to do the weeding. But if I didn't have the cage on top, I'd probably lose 90% of the harvest. The apple tree is looking really great this year. It is covered in apples. I'm sure that not all these apples will grow to harvest, but it's great to see the tree this way. Last year, I didn't get any apples. What I have been doing is watering the tree once a week. The tree's only been in the ground a couple of years and I want to make sure that the roots are surrounded in moist soil. It seems to be working. I grow my gooseberries and currants in this fruit cage. What I've needed to do, hopefully this will come out well on the camera, is repair the netting around the edges. Something really wants to get in here. I'm suspicious of squirrels, but also it could be humans because a lot of the gap is at waist height, suspiciously close to being able to pick the fruit. The bush at the front here is a red gooseberry variety. When they've got some red on them, like this fruit here, they'll be sweet enough for picking. Let me see if I can pick this one. I hope that's coming out well. That's the first gooseberry pick this year. Next to it, I have this white currant bush that I planted over winter. It's now showing a good amount of leaf. This year, there won't be any fruits off it, but if it establishes itself this growing season, hopefully next year, I'll get a harvest. It's still early days for my red currant bush. If I get underneath here, it may be possible to see the fruit that's forming. Overall, I don't get that much fruit off this red currant bush. But then when it comes to red currants, I don't eat them in large amounts anyway. The fruit are delicious, but I think delicious in small amounts. What I am excited about are the tabries. If I just get in here and show this tabry fruit, this one here, this fruit is almost two inches in length, five centimeters in length, great size, almost half the length of my finger. I do enjoy eating the fruit fresh, but it does make delicious compote and jam. In size, my one tabu plant is three meters in width and about two meters in height and produces absolutely masses of fruit. Next to the tabri, I have my loganberry plant and my loganberry plant is definitely a few weeks behind my tabri in terms of fruiting. It's also produced much less leaf mass. I think this autumn or over winter, I'll give the plant a good mulch. Perhaps the plant will appreciate that and grow stronger. I am really excited about my boysenberry plant, which I have on the end here. In dimensions, it's about the same size as my tabri, so three meters wide and a couple of meters high. And it's just loaded with fruit. Hopefully this is coming out well on the camera. Unlike the tabri, the fruit aren't ready yet. But some fruit are starting to ripen. 
when right they're black, the colour of blackberries. Now it is the raspberry season. I've always been a little disappointed with the raspberries I grow down here. They're not the size I would hope. This is an example here, probably a little bit smaller than one of my thumbnails. I do get a reasonable amount of fruit. It's really the size that's the issue. The flavour is great, deliciously sweet. I think it's due to the dry soil I have down here. Also, because of the length of the raspberry row, although I do water it, perhaps I need to increase the amount of water I give the plants. Nevertheless, I do enjoy the harvest. Moving on to flowers, the flower bed I have outside my polytunnel is really starting to develop now. I have one poppy over here, and I think in the middle here, this is a cosmos. I'm not sure it is, but I think that's what I planted. It's growing really nicely, and I hope in a few weeks' time it will be full of colour. I have slightly mixed results with my dahlias. This one's a good size, but it's been fairly expensively eaten. And this one down here, which for early spring was covered by the leaves of the rhubarb plant, is now starting to grow through, but it is of a tiny size. But my dahlias that I have at the end of one of my row of potatoes, these two plants here, one on the left and one on the right, although they are very different in size, are looking great, much more healthy, not being eaten, and are even developing flower heads. And that's also the case for the dahlias that I have next to my squash. Again, they're very different in size. The one on the front here is probably twice the size as the one at the back. And the one at the back is showing some signs of being eaten. But interestingly, that is the one that has developed a flower head. I haven't grown these dahlia plants before, so I'm excited to see how the flowers look. Now, I germinated my dahlia tubers inside the polytunnel, but I did have one dahlia that failed to germinate. And what I did is I lifted it out of the compost and replanted it. And I noticed that inside the pot, some of the tubers had started to rot. But by removing the rotten uh, tubers and replanting it in fresh soil, I've had some success. It does seem to have germinated, admittedly a long way behind the others. But hopefully that saved the plant. I'm hoping even if I don't get any flowers this year, the tubers will still be good and I can replant the tubers for next summer and hopefully see the flowers that year. And now moving to the vegetables. The vegetables are behind the fruit. There's very little to harvest apart from the spinach, but the last four weeks have seen really fast growth down here on the plot. The weather's been great. It was wet a few weeks ago and it's been sunny since. The plants are looking a really good size and I hope over the next four to eight weeks there'll be plenty to harvest down here. Starting with the perpetual spinach and chard, there are lots and lots of leaves that can be harvested. I have been watering the plants almost on a daily basis in hot weather and I worry if I didn't do that the plants would bolt. Over the last few days the squash have really started to grow well too. This winter squash variety is now throwing up flowers and in a month or so's time will cover much of the area here in leaf. It's a similar story with the courgette plants. Now the courgettes are also in flower and there are small courgettes forming all around the plants. Now I find the first courgettes that grow may never actually make it to harvest, but it's a really good sign. And if I have some courgettes that don't grow, sometimes I remove the first fruit to encourage the plant to flower. And then I find the fruit that comes next grows much faster. And at that stage, the plants can produce fruit prolifically. That would be great if it were to happen this year. I've created a wigwam structure for my climbing French beans. The plants have been a little bit slow to grow. I reckon that's because the soil they're growing in was actually the spent compost from my tomatoes last year. And the result of that is that the compost is really, really dry, even though I've been watering it. The plants do have some black fly on them. And what I have been doing is just running my fingers up and down the stem just to get rid of some of the black fly and there are ants that are climbing up the plants. I find this is almost impossible to stop completely but removing the black fly I can by hand should help keep that under control. It's just a case of wait and see for the harvest. 
there are plenty of ladybirds around and hopefully that will help some. I think it's been quite a slow year for the potatoes. The potato row in front of me here is a main crop variety called Picasso and behind that I have my two beds of first earlies. The first early plants and the main crop variety are about the same size even though I planted the first earlies about four to six weeks earlier. Now both the main crop and the first earlies are in flower. I hope it's possible to see that here. This is the first year I've actually grown first earlies. This variety is called Pentland Javelin and I'm planning to dig up one plant once the flowers have started to drop just to check how big the tubers are. My original idea was to harvest the first earlies for a salad potato this month. That's not really a problem. The main crop variety will go into storage and I'll eat the first earlies fresh. The onion plants are now starting to stand up. On last month's video, the plants were growing diagonally upwards and on some, the stems are almost horizontal, but I think they're looking much better now. And the garlic next to it are growing tall and straight. Now the leaves are starting to yellow. I think they're not far off being ready to harvest. The elephant garlic is much further behind. The traditional garlic I planted in October, but the elephant garlic didn't go into the ground in late March, perhaps early April. They're growing really strongly now, but they're a long way away from being ready to harvest. And then finishing the tour inside the polytunnel. I've been really excited to see how well the plants have grown over the last few weeks. Overall, I think the tomato plants are a little bit behind they have been in other seasons. The plants are in flower, which is great, which means that the fruit will form shortly. But in some years, I've been able to harvest tomatoes before the end of June, and I don't think that's going to be the case this year. What are ready to harvest are the cucumbers. Now, I said in the last video that I wanted the cucumbers to perform well this year because the seeds almost cost one pound each. But the plants have grown really strongly. It's a mini munch variety. If I lift up the leaves here, it should be possible to see a couple of fruits dangling down there. If I just get this one here, and there we go. That's the first cucumber of the season. And I think some more very close behind. This one here appears to be a good size as well. And that's two. Now, I think the tomato plants are looking really, really healthy, if I just pan up here to show that. And I'm using this twine, which is suspended from the wire supports that I've run across the frame of the polytunnel. That really helps keep them upright, especially important when they're in fruit with the weight of the fruit that can potentially topple them over. Inside the polytunnel, it does get very hot inside here. I've got a thermometer and the maximum temperature it's read over the last few weeks is 57 degrees, which means that it's essential that the plants are watered every day. Now, I did talk about taking tomato cuttings in last month's video, and it's easy to do if I just reach in here and grab this upward growing stem, which is at the base here. You can either cut or pull them off and it can be plunged down into wet compost. Now, I did exactly that with these plants here. And I took these at the time of making last month's video. And now what I'm going to do is to repot these seedlings and grow them on over the course of the summer. And it'll be interesting to see just how early they fruit. I also did exactly the same approach with cucumbers. I took these cucumber cuttings at exactly the same time. It's possible to take cucumber cuttings in exactly the same way as tomato plants. Just looking in here as an example, there's a main stem which is running upwards, but at a corner point at an elbow between the vertical growing stem, sometimes these offshoots emerge, which are new leaders, and it's possible to take this stem and plunge it into compost exactly the same way as with tomatoes. And actually, looking at this plant here, it may be possible to see just there, there's actually a tiny cucumber forming on the cutting. These two cuttings I took from one plant. Now, at one pound a seed, 
if I can get three plants from them, that actually makes growing cucumber a lot better value for money, I reckon. And lastly, finishing with the chilli plants. These chilli plants also seem to be performing really well inside the polytunnel. In this pot here, I've got three chilli plants. And in this one over here, one chilli plant. I'm interested to see just how many chilli plants I can grow successfully inside a pot. That's the experimenting I'm doing this year. What I'm also going to do is just pinch out the top, the growing spur of the chilli plant, just like that. And hopefully that will make the plant more bushy and mean more fruit will form. And that's it. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the usual way.